Color pencils, I think, are fun. You can use markers. You can use just a regular graphite pencil. That's what I usually start off with, a regular pencil. And um, if anybody, yeah, those are nice. Good. Um, good to see everybody. This is just a regular pen from Staples. Um, let's do the let's do the pencil. I mean, I always like I always like. It's funny because I always um start drawing with a pencil. Let's do, let's start this thing off with one long rectangle and the, the long rectangle is gonna be the length of this pencil. Okay, so this is the wood part of the pencil and I can draw mine a lot larger. This is gonna start off really easy, but you have to be able to draw simple first um, and then, then you can build up to you know, more difficult stuff. One line is easy. Getting the exact same line can be a little bit more challenging, so I, I'm gonna put a little dot down here. So I know where I'm starting. I know where I'm ending. Sketching means like just drawing, but this other guy was telling me that you actually have to commit to a dark line because dark lines are harder to erase. Um, you know, you can sketch the line in. You're not quite sure. And the more complicated the image, you know, you know the, like, the, like the more you'll have to, um, you know, the more insecure you'll be. And you know you can ease into it. It's like instead of jumping off the diving board into the deep end, you can like ease in through the steps in the shallow end. You're still gonna go swimming. Okay, so we've got this long rectangle, and then I'm gonna put a jagged end, and I'm gonna add my other simple shape, which is a triangle. Now, pencils that are sharpened properly have a perfect triangle. Ones that have like a busted pencil sharpener they get angled. So you want to have a straight one. So you want that triangle to be in the middle and then you can just cut off, you know, shade in the end and that becomes like the pencil tip. Like the so then we've got this long, thin rectangle and it looks like a lot of times they're like hexagonal or octagonal, you know what I mean? There's like planes. And I think there's just a little, the, the artist puts a little line down the middle of the pencil to show that it's not a cylinder, that it's actually you know, has like flat sides. Sometimes it's shiny, sometimes it's like gold plated, um, but that has these little ridges in the side that, you know, represent like where it's clamped. There's the pencil, or that's the eraser. I'm doing yellow on yellow. Regular Ticonderoga. It took me so long to learn how to say that word, but some of the orange, you don't really see orange in nature a whole lot. And, and then when the, when the leaves change, there's so much orange. Then there's then you get pumpkins, of course. I feel good about the pencil. You could write your name on the side if you wanted. Um, I'm trying to find. I just used. Um... All right. So shall we try the hammer? Let's do the hammer. Now this is the other weird thing about the hammer is that. I'm done coloring in my pencil. You guys already did the hammer. <laughs> you already did the hammer. Um, yeah, that, yeah. It's a great. It's a nice spread. So you can do the hammer from different angles if you wanted. Um, oh, I forgot to do this. Look at this little trick. Um, artists use this all the time. Instead of actually doing full blown shading, you're gonna want to add um, just a dark line on one side, like not add a dark line, you just actually thicken the line that exists. So I'm gonna shade this side. And this is what the artist did on that pencil. And it makes it feel three dimensional. So even though there's not really, you know, a thickness that we're drawing uh, or a shadow, just darkening that line suggests a shadow. And the, the hammer doesn't really have that, but we can choose, we can try, we can try to do it with the hammer. This is or shoes or something. So I'm gonna start with the connection between the hammer of the metal part and then the handle. So the handle, in my opinion, is a little bit on the easy side because we already did a rectangle for the, um, for the pencil. So I'm just gonna use a rectangle for the handle. And then instead of having it be flat at the bottom, I'm gonna put a little like angled moment, which is kind of like a grip. The material here looks like it's wood. So I'm gonna put some marks to make it look like the grain of the wood. Wait, wait, I messed up. <clears throat> Obviously colors, um, you know, the wood that I used for the pencil, which is probably too dark for the pencil, but it might be the right color for the Wait, the I messed hammer. up, hold on, hold on. Take your time, dude. Take your time. Again, I haven't drawn this hammer before, but I'm looking at the what the hammer does. And obviously the, the, oh. the, the rounded portion on the left is what hits the hammers. Nice, um, Lulu, that looks great. Um, and then on the back, there's the hook part that pulls 
if say there's a nail that you don't want hammered in, you can like pry the hammer out. And there's like these two little teeth at the back end. And that's what this thin part is back here. We don't, we don't get to see or it because it's you, flat. What's that, Brooks? If you're demolating a house, you could use that instead of a crowbar if you don't have a crowbar. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah or if, you have, or if, you, if, you, if your crowbar is like just too big. I mean, some nails, small enough, small enough, small enough, small enough, you need like like really strong and, and laid in, you need a big crowbar. Um, but so the, the hammer, the metal of the hammer is kind of gonna spring out from the handle. So watch this. So I'm gonna come out on this side. I'm gonna come out on this side. <clears throat> so this is like the base of the metal part. And then now I've got two kind of separate directions that I'm gonna go, which is wild because you don't necessarily think about it as a rectangle because it's usually rounded. It's like cylindrical. So let me draw just for fun. This is the hammer part. I keep saying the hammer part, but I mean like the contact point. Okay, so this is a three dimensional version. Kind of quickly so you can see that this part up here, I might even shade it right now. Can we with color it and now that I'm done? Yeah, color it. You can always, you, everyone's got to move at their own pace. Move at your own pace and and like change it, embellish it, make it better, add a name. Yeah, well, it's kind of very basic, but in a way I really like it. Sometimes the best drawings are the most simple. It's so true. Um, yeah, it's not about how being co how complex it is. It's really about how beautiful it is. And I don't know. I think that even my hammer looks like it's kind of too close to the pencil. I wish I had spaced it out a little bit better. So I'm using this pen. And it's like a dark blue pen. And I think if I remember properly, like the metal is kind of dark. All right. And again, these are just the warm ups. All right, so we've got a butterfly. Should we try the butterfly first and then we'll do the, the alligator? But I'm gonna start off with a, a light green. And I'm gonna start off in a way that you guys might not think about how you would normally do it. So I'm gonna start first with a long oval. And believe it or not, this oval is going to be his body. So I'm going to put this oval for his body, and then we're going to build all of his legs, his tail, and his head off of the body. Um, I the, like this. The sooner you get the head in there, the faster it's going to look like the, the creature. OK, so it's just like people. We have our the body, and then we have to get the, the head. But how do we get to the head? We have to go through the neck. So let's go up and draw a little rectangle for the neck. We're gonna attach, we're gonna attach the neck to the body, to the oval. So even if the shape of the head is not exactly right, or you're like, oh, I don't think it's right, it don't don't judge it. Don't don't assess it too early because it could be, it might not be. Let's see if we can put the eyes, the nose, um, and the mouth in place. And this guy looks actually really funny. So I'm gonna put a little arch up here for his eyebrow and then quickly put in the eye. And look how far back on the head it is. So the neck comes up, we got the back of the head, and we're gonna put this little arch for his eyebrow, and then we'll put his eye. His eye is really high to the top. And if you think about what alligators do, they hang out in the mud, like they're buried by water, they still breathe air, so their nose has to stick out of the water. In order for them to see anything, their eyes have to stick out. So they can like sneak up on their prey, nobody even knows they're there, and then they burst out of the water like so fast. And they can't run very fast, but they can move really, really fast this year from the middle of the road. He was in the middle of the road in my neighborhood. And I was like, what am I gonna do? I don't know how to pick up a snapping turtle. And then I went on YouTube and I found a, um, it was a Wednesday? beautiful. Um, all right, so we go from the top of the head where his eyes have to be able to stick out of the water and then his nose have to stick out too. But you can't believe how far away um, the eyes and the nose are you know, on an alligator. So I'm gonna go down the, uh, yeah, what time? Uh, 11 o'clock, thanks. All right, so we're gonna bounce all the way from the eyes all the way to the end of the head here. And I'm gonna put another bump there and that's gonna be where the nose is. And that's, that. I mean, already looks like an alligator, at least from the lip. And then this is the fun part. And the way that the alligator's mouth ripples up and down and goes all the way past the eye up into the smile is like such, the, it's like the smile of an alligator is like one of these, is one of these, you know, iconic images. and. 
you know, the teeth, some of the teeth go up, some of the teeth go down. And, you know, humans have been, you know, studying and um, sculpting alligators, like all the way back to ancient Egypt. So I got these teeth going up, I got these teeth going down and I'm adding to it, of course, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to like copy what this person is doing exactly. So we, the, the um, I also heard that alligators, when their jaws come down, they're really strong. Like they're not very strong opening them up. Um, and so people that wrestle alligators, they just make sure that they put their arms around the top and the bottom of his mouth. And so he can't open it up in order to bite. So speaking of not, opening their mouth the mouth is closed so we got to draw we got to draw this bottom jaw and then do you see how it swells out at the bottom i think i know how how to wrestle an alligator an alligator <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't take lasso. my chances make i wouldn't lasso, take my chances. Then when it's head, make a lasso and then when it heads up lasso its face and close its mouth i mean yeah, oh, if, you, if you feel um, confident with your lasso um, sorry, the last thing I want to say is that, that that jaw muscle is all the way in the back. Humans have it, dogs have it, horses have it like incredibly because um, they're always chewing grass. But this rounded portion of the jaw goes all the way in the back. So we have the eye, the nose, the mouth, and then like basically this lower chin and this lower jaw. And then I'm going to make his neck a little wrinkly at the bottom. Nice. Okay, that feels good. That feels good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this up a little bit because it's already 1024 and I really just want this to be a warm up. Um, so I, let's do this like a little rapid fire. Um, so I'm going to come down his back and I remember seeing like alligator skins and alligators at the zoo. And I'm see I remember their backs being really spiky. So I'm going to do two tracks of spikes going down the back. And then I want to quickly get into his tail. So his tail, I'm gonna break up into probably three parts, maybe four parts, but there's this part where the tail exits the body. So the body is really wide. So just like the, the ball, the, the oval that we did, the neck had to come off of the ball. Now the tail has got to come off of the ball, but on the other end. All right, so then we're gonna get, I'm gonna do one S curve, one curve this way. We're gonna do one curve that way. And then I'm gonna wrap it up and come into a point. All right, so I'm gonna just section these off so you can see what I did. So I guess that's four parts technically. So the the um, the tail was wide, almost like it's almost like the tail has a neck. Think about the tail having a neck, and then the tail I'm gonna use into three parts. I go whips left, whips right, and then comes to a point. So you know, arch to this way, arches this way, and then we'll bring it into a point. My alligator looks really happy. <laughs> I know, so does mine. That's the happiest alligator I've seen in a while. Um, so the arms are actually hilarious because if you think about like, and they, look like, nice little, like they look like little baby arms or something because like they're like they look human because you can see the parts. Just think about your own arm, like shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, and then you have the hand, and then you have hip to knee, knee to ankle, and then you have the foot. So watch this. I'm gonna go shoulder here, and that's gonna go down to the elbow. And then I'm gonna go from the elbow, I'm gonna go into the wrist. And then I'm gonna turn that wrist into that alligator claw. I gave him four fingers. <clears throat> shoulder to elbow, elbow to wrist, and then the hand. And then the other one is you get this rounded um, hip. So it goes hip to knee, short little leg. And then knee to ankle. And then that, and then he's got this, uh, you know, it looks like a, it almost looks like a frog foot, like got three toes. I can't, I, and I don't know if they, have, they've got claws on them. I don't know if they're webbed. I actually can't really remember what I, and I may, have, I made those legs too, yeah. probably a little bit too big. I think I they to. are webbed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it would be weird if they weren't. Because you have to swim. I mean, it's not webbed like a duck, but they are probably webbed like a uh, like a frog. There's got to be similarities between. Can you, like, can you adjust your camera so that I can see the um bottom butt? See the what? The back leg. Um, I don't know. I I, I see everything. Yeah. Can so you, do I. It might be on your end, Michaela. <laughs> I'm not sure. Did that help things or no? Okay, good. All right, so the last one on here, we have to do it. 
Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be super, I wouldn't call it super easy, but um, it's going to be easier than the, we, actually, I don't know, should we color this guy? Let's color him. I'm going to get, I'm going to color him with a different color green though. Maybe a blue green or a brown. Oh my gosh, my feet look so bad. I have so much green and I don't know which one to use. So I'm just going so I just switched over to a lighter green. I used that blue green and it doesn't really look like an alligator color. Well, and one I thing mean, I've learned one thing I've learned about color pencils is that with color pencils, usually you can have two different colors um, and they mix they mix really nicely. Once you start mixing three or four, you know, the paper gets really smooth and it doesn't actually work anymore. So this green so if you get one color and it doesn't and it's like kind of good then you can get a second color and improve it so i know that these are a little cartoony i know these might be some easy you know pretty easy for some of you guys but um actually but before we do the bald eagle we really should do the butterfly and the reason i want to do the butterfly is because the bald eagle and the butterfly are the same strategy. So if you if you follow up here, um, the way that you want to get start the, the butterfly is the same way that we're going to start the, the bald eagle. And that's with a line, which gives you the center. Okay, so we're going to base everything off the center. So you have a um, you have the head, you have the abdomen, excuse me, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And so all three of those parts are all lined up on the same line. Um, so the alligator was in profile. Uh, profile is when you see something like from the side. Um, this is seen straight on. Um, and so whenever there's an animal that you see straight on, it's usually equal on left side and the right side. And part of what makes the drawing really strong is when the right side and the left side look as close to the same as possible. Um, and that's what, and that's, that's true for this butterfly. And I'll show you um, some of my strategies for how to do the butterfly. And that's the, when we do the bald eagle, we want to have the eye on the right side look like the eye on the left side. We want the nostril on the right to look like the nostril on the left. So that the whole thing gets balanced out, um, it'll look, you know, it should look really good. Let's do the wing. We'll do the top part of the wing. And it's interesting because there's a lot of different ways of, of seeing this top wing. But the first part that I want to do is going to be the arched, the arc of the very top of the wing and then see how it curls down. So without doing the whole wing, we want to get to the other side and get the other side of the butterfly's um, wing to match. So the arch on the right is going to match the arch on the left. And you'll be able to use this to draw butterflies for the rest of your life. And you know, understanding that animals are, you know, ha are the same usually on one side and the other. That's called bilateral symmetry. You know, some animals aren't, um, but most animals are. And so is the alligator, honestly. If you were to look at the alligator straight on, if he was like attacking you, like the eyes would be equal on both sides. The nose would be equal on both sides. If I would the arch and then the curve down, arch and the curve down. And, you know, again, we're really hoping that it's correct. It might not be. I mean, I think it might be, but we'll see. Um, and now we need to go, I'm not going to complete that side of the wing. What I want to do is I want to find where the, uh, where the bottom of the wing is. So I'm going to pull this angle out and this angle out. So this is, this is the um, same wing. This is the upper part of the wing, but I'm going to show where they both come out of either side of the body. <clears throat> and this is where you can kind of have some creative uh, freedom. So I need to link up these two wings. And if you, and if you follow this side, the, this side and the left side are the same, then I'm gonna curve up and then it's gonna connect. Ooh, that's pretty. So I don't know if you saw that, but what I used is an S curve. And S curves are just really elegant. They're really beautiful. They show up in hair, they show up in water, they show up in grass, um, they're everywhere. Um, so I you know, made sure that the length coming out of the body was the same and then where that top arch was over, and I'm gonna do an S curve on this side too. S and connect. You know, we're gonna do the, the bottom half of the butterfly wings. And I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than the way um, this artist did it because I've been seeing 
a lot of butterfly tails as looking like teardrops. So this, I'm going to use the, the, the same line here and I'm going to make a teardrop tails. on this side. So a teardrop shape is That particular kind of butterfly is called a swallowtail. A swallowtail? Yeah. Um, okay. I think you're right, actually. Um, so if I take this teardrop, if I take this teardrop and I make it even on both sides, to make it a swallowtail, you could actually extend off a little droplet on each side of the wing, or each side of the bottom part of the wing. You know, and then that's where the pattern, that's where the pattern becomes, um, you know, up to you. And I was going to say, you can do a decoration on the right side. And then you can do a decoration on the left side. You can do a decoration on the bottom side and a decoration. So basically I'm just going left side to right side, left side to right side. Um, once you have both wings and they're equal, you're in business. I mean, you are in business. And then you can just have a lot of, you can look at nature and, or you can invent your own. I love studying nature and following, you know, the lead that they offer, but. But the head, the proportion of the head to the wings is completely different. Like this um, butterfly, there's the antenna. I forgot to draw the antenna. That makes it. And then yeah, the, the, there's like, so the, the wing has a teardrop shape. Um, one of the patterns inside the upper part of the wing has a teardrop shape. And so then I put the antenna on and I put a little teardrop shape at the end of the antenna too. And that, that looks good. So now we have we have the same shape the, the the teardrop in three different ways the actual shape of the wing one of the patterns on the wing and then the shape of the antenna and we will try this bald eagle um, we're going to start with the center line Wait, wait, wait. Then we're, then we're gonna build the beak off of the center and then we're gonna add the eyes and then we're gonna add the, the feathers. So there's only really three parts. The only three parts is the beak, the eyes, and the feathers. Okay. All right, we are, we, the nice thing is that we are all warmed up, meaning um, I feel like I'm going, I feel like I'm going strong with my, um, with my art skills right now. I'm going to switch over to a regular a regular pencil because I feel like I might need to erase at some point. Um, and I want to make sure that's nice and level. Let me straighten that out. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the other interesting thing about this photo, part of what makes it really great is that we can zoom in on it um, and we get like a lot of details and it's going to be fun. The only problem with it is that the top of the head is cropped off and so is the side. So we're basically going to break down um, I said there was only three parts, the beak, the eyes, and the feathers. That's true, but there's, um, the, in the feathers, there's a bunch of different kinds of feathers. So there's like the forehead feathers, there's the feathers that are really small, the eyes, yeah. and then there's the, um, and then there's the beak. Some people that were <laughs> developing some anxiety about drawing each one of the feathers. Um, you don't have to draw, in a way, you only have to draw four feathers. When I say four feathers, I mean, you have to come up with a code for feathers that are on the top of the head. And what that's going to be is they're one of going to be layered. They're probably going to be triangles. They're going to be triangles that get layered. So there's going to be a row here, a row here, and then a back row. Then 
you're going to need feathers that are like around the eye. The eye, the ones around the eye don't even look like feathers. They probably wind up look like little ticks, like little hatch marks. And it's going to make the, it almost looks like he's got an eye patch on, like, like this gray eye patch. Then you have these feathers that, you know, are spill out from the corner of the mouth and then make like this, this like goatee and like neck beard. It actually looks like very Amish the uh, feathers down here. So we've got feathers on the top of the head, the feathers underneath the eye, and then the basically the, this is hair, fe this like hair feathers from the top of the head versus like a beard feathers. And then the last one that we need is that we need to get a differentiation between the um, feathers of the head and the feathers of the body. Cause then that's why, that's the only way you know it's a bald eagle. The bald eagle has white feathers on, on the top of his head, but that's it, I guess on the tail too. Um, so the feathers on the chest here are going to have to be shaded. We have to tone those down. <clears throat> Let's get set, go. All right, so I'm going to start first with the, the middle of the beak. And I'm just estimating that line. And then the beak has like the upper portion and it points to the ground. That's like the wild part about this thing. So when I find the top of the beak, I'm going to put a little arch at the top. And then I'm gonna put a point at the bottom. So it was kind of like the um, it was kind of like the butterfly, you know, where the butterfly started when it had like the head and then the abdomen and then the thorax, head, thorax, abdomen, the three different parts. Um, um, all right, so let's start from the beak because I think that's gonna be the part that's most well defined. So we're gonna arch up this way. And we're gonna arch up this way. And I'm wondering if I should even make my beak longer. That's the beauty of pencils, so you can adjust them. Yeah, I'll make my beak a little longer. I feel like if, if you're gonna make a beak too long or too short, make it too long. Look how sharp and pointy that is. That's awesome. All right, so this upper arc here, arch, is the top of the lip. So I'm gonna curl in on this side and I really am trying to show where the mouth is open. Do you guys see that? And I might even, I might even color that in. Because um, Okay, so after we did that, we did the mouth where it was open, there's an upper lip and a lower lip. And I think I might wait on the upper lip and the lower lip. I really want to get the the the, the shiny nail portion, like the I'm talons. I'm noticing something on the thing. There's also under the things that you just draw, drew. Yeah. yeah. There's also more by the by the under it. Around yeah, yeah, yeah. So that 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 good point, George. So that's where I, that's kind of where I'm going with this. So once I get the top, um, the the top of the wing, and I don't know if it makes a diamond shape, but I'm gonna basically link up the pointy part at the bottom to the arched part at the top, and then I've got nostrils above that. I see it. I see it. Cool. I see the beak now. Yeah, it's start, the beak is like starting to come into form. All right, let's do the upper lip and the lower lip. So we'll get an upper lip here, a lower lip down here. And I think George, what you were talking about was that the it almost has like a yellow chin. So we got the upper lip and the lower lip. And then does it go into the chin here? George, give me one, give me one second. So once these nostrils go in, then we wanna do the angle of the brow on either side. And part of what makes bald eagles so interesting is the fact that they look stern. Like they look really serious. And in humans, when your parents get mad at you or when you're like really like, you know, either like wanna be firm, like you flex your eyebrows and you like, mm, like really give it some like, you know, emotion. And the, the, the eagles, they can't help it. They just have, they have like resting angry face. So it's their, their brow just like comes, it comes in really steep. And as humans, we register that as being, you know, angry, even though he's not really that angry. So let's do the eye on this side. So we got the nostril here, we got the brow. And then we, I want to use a circle 
but the eyes are seen a little bit from the side and the circle of the eyes are gonna disappear underneath that brow. So you got an eye on this side and an eye on this side. And I mean, I have been drawing, I draw all day, every day. The body, you can. Okay, let's do these eyes really quickly. So the eyes are gonna be made up of three parts. So we're gonna get the dark outside rim of the eye. And then we gotta put the pupil in the middle of that. So is anyone familiar with Angry Birds? Mm -hmm. So I think this looks a lot like that. <laughs> yeah, this is like Angry Birds. The game Birds. Angry Birds, yeah. Makes so we've me got a dark, a dark outside rim and then a really dark pupil. And I can even overemphasize the, uh, the brow. Look at that, I love it. Um, all right, so next phase of this operation. I think we're gonna make the, get the placement of the feathers on the top of the head. And we're gonna do that by making a, it's almost like a piece of pie. So listen, to, like, like think about it. Um, I'm gonna draw a piece of pie really quickly. So, so you got crust here, and then you have the top of the piece of the pie, and then you have the thickness on either side. And then what kind of pie do you like? Pumpkin, apple? No. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Okay. Yeah, it's pumpkin, for sure. <laughs> Um, okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna go over it. I'm, go I'm gonna go over this with green. So look at this. So I take this wedge and then I'm gonna cover. Yeah, that's kind of like the shape of the pie. This is what I'm looking for for the top of the head. So I'm gonna follow this brow ridge. We already have the front point, and then we have to do the arc of the top. Um, the um line surrounding the pupil is too uh, thick. Um. All right, so if we've got the rounded top, then we need to get the flat bottom. So this is what I'm drawing here is just this, the, um, where the white feathers meet the dark feathers. And then I'm gonna connect it. So I'm zooming out even more so you guys can see it. And these are the zones that we need to create feathers in. So obviously I'm oversimplifying, but we're gonna be able to turn this eagle and the, he almost looks like a um, looks like a ghost or something. What shape is that? Looks like a jelly bean, jelly bean. or gob or a gobstopper. Oh yeah, those things. Try to be, try to be, um, try to be poised. Try to figure out what the, where the, what the feathers look like, where. So the feathers on the forehead seem like they go in these rows and they like rainbow across. And I'm just gonna do a generic rainbow across. And then maybe I could use white pencil. Sophia, how are you? All right, there we go. Here's my right. head. And then, and then what used to be, what used to be a straight line at the top of the head, I'm using at, they're almost like little spikes, but the spikes are just feathers. So those are the feathers for the top of the head. And then remember we talked about the eye patch feathers, the feathers that go underneath the eye. I'm gonna watch those scoop out. I'm just gonna make like, it's so funny because sometimes when you, um, you, know, you would call it this type of mark, you would call it like feathery but these look less like feathers than any other part of the bird. And then underneath, where they get wider, they actually do make more triangles. So underneath the eyes where that patch is, we'll call it that, like, that feathery tick peat with. And what other people may have done too, is when I drew the outside line, I tried to make that line light. I tried to make it dark enough that you could see it, but in the end, um, you're not going to need what I'm that starting to do. I'm darkening be... it now. Okay, cool. Yeah, the edges are going to be feathers, not a solid line. And the best example of that is going to be wait, what when we get from the, um, we've got to draw, you know, the beard feathers and they all radiate out from the center. And those feathers get a little bit longer. So I'm having these uh, feathers that are coming out that make the beard and the neck. 
And then where I had this straight line at the bottom, I've got to make it rigid. It's almost like the very bottom of the pencil, you know, where it was like, yeah. what, it was like where the edge of the, pe the paint is kind of carved off. So these are the light feathers overlapping the dark feathers. Whoa, can I do that? I wonder if the white's gonna show up. You guys, thanks for I'm not trying to rush, but I wanna color my I wanna color my thing in. Can I pull half of the body at least? Can you what? Never mind. Ooh, that's not dark enough. Oh. Oh. Sophia's got us some paper. Hey, Sophia, this is my mom, Claudia, by the way. Oh, how's it going, y'all? Um, even with a little bit of white, it's like the bald eagle is so characteristic of having white feathers on his head. That. I don't have a white color pencil. I know. See, I'm using yellow paper, so it's able to stand out. So the, the, the secret for you all is going to be to shade the background. So if you're using white, if you're using white paper, the way to make the eagle look like he's got white feathers oh, is to shade everything around him. And obviously put in some brown or some dark for the feathers. Now you can use, you don't need colors for this. You can also just, you know, shade it in with regular pencil. There, this is just. Uh. <laughs> I, I'm actually kind of happy with, my, with the way it turned out. <laughs> and there's the bottom, here's the side, here's the top and the other side. 